Welcome to the Cool Tools Show. I'm Mark Frauenfelder, Editor-in-Chief of Cool Tools, a website of tool recommendations written by our readers. You can find us at cool-tools.org. I'm joined by my co-host, Kevin Kelly, founder of Cool Tools. Hey, Kevin. Hey, it's great to be here. In each episode of the Cool Tools Show, Kevin and I talk to a guest about some of his or her favorite uncommon and uncommonly good tools they think others should know about. Our returning guest this week is Dr. Barbara Dace, a pharmacist specialist who creates custom compounded prescription medications. She's also an auto harpist and award-winning singer-songwriter based in Sacramento, California. Barbara has written a bunch of great reviews on Cool Tools, and I always love seeing her name pop up in the suggestion uh, emails that we receive because I know it's going to be a really well-written review, and it's going to be something useful. A year or so ago, Barbara recommended some rubber sandals that are kind of look like Crocs, but uh, they aren't. It's a different brand. I'll, I'll make a link to it, and they're extremely comfortable, and I wear them all the time. And every time I wear them, I think of you, Barbara. So oh. welcome to Cool Tools. <laughs> Well, thank you. So yes, I'm I'm glad you're enjoying your flaming red uh, clogs there. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yes, as I, I sort of discovered them because as a pharmacist, as you may or may not know, we spend a lot of time standing up. Uh, and so, you know, eight hours a day standing on concrete, your feet are screaming by the end of the day. So pharmacists are always in a endless search for the holy grail of shoes that will have your feet not screaming by the end of the day. So <laughs> I've tried Echoes and Adidas and Abeos and Earth Shoes and Berkeys and Clarks and God knows what else. But what did work the best are these $20 emoji foam clogs, uh, which I got from Amazon. I picked them because they had a lot of good reviews and they don't look all that crocky. Um, mm -hmm. the, the air holes are more like a honeycomb type of design. Yeah. Yeah, and they're a lot softer than the Crocs I tried. Um, the, the foam is softer. And so they provide really good support for your feet just by distributing the pressure evenly over the entire footbed. So mm -hmm. it, in, you know, it doesn't create that much in the way of pressure spots. And they've got a little lip on the back, so you don't tend to accidentally step out of them. They stay on your feet. Um, and there's plenty of room in the toe cap, which is good for me because my toes are kind of claustrophobic. They hate being bound in. Um, so I've had one pair for a couple of years and another pair one year, and I wear them almost every day. And really, they show no wear on top. On the bottom, however, I did notice eventually the tread wore off. And so I mm -hmm. bought those adhesive non-slip sole protectors you can get. Basically, it's just like, you know, you peel off the sticky paper and glue them to the bottom of, of the shoe. Um, and that I don't makes know about them. Those. Yeah. So just kind of keep an eye because eventually what will happen is the bottom, like I say, the tread will go away. And then if you happen to step on, like, say, wet concrete, you will notice all of a sudden you'll be skating. So uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead, mm -hmm. go ahead and get those before they, they uh, wear <laughs> okay. down too much. So, okay. Th that's cool. Um, it's a pretty amazing design, all those features, like you said, for like a $20 pair of sandals. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I looked at them the other day and they were like 22 now. The mm -hmm. only other uh, thing is uh, I read one review that said they left them outside in the very hot sun and they actually shrank. Uh, <laughs> Weird. So, so don't like, you know, if you live in Phoenix, Arizona or something, do not leave them out in the sun. Um, and I did notice one time when I was wearing them, uh, on a walk by the river, I stepped on a sharp stick and it actually stuck right through the sole. So, Ooh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, not the best thing to wear, um, hiking, but I just pulled the stick out and it was fine. The foam sealed up again. So it was all good. good. Right. Like but, uh, yeah. yeah, saved me a lot of money on, uh, work in casual shoes. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, Definitely. Definitely. Well, okay. So the emoji foam clogs, that sounds great. Um, and and is, is that the actual name I'm at? The yeah, site? it's uh, A-M-O-J-I. So Amoji, right. not Emoji. Right. But, and uh, they yeah. have unisex sandals, slippers. Is this one, this one that you're recommending is called the, the which one? I think it says like garden clogs or something like okay. that. So if you put like, Emoji garden clogs in Amazon, they'll pop up and you'll be able to recognize them because they've got that 
uh, honeycomb pattern on them. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, where all the air holes on top. So okay. that because I, they they make ones without holes, but for some reason they're not as soft. Because I tried to get another um, another kind they made that was um, you know closed in because it's obviously they're going to get a little chilly in the winter. Um, but those weren't as soft foam, so I wasn't quite as thrilled with those. Okay, good to know. Yeah, so so tell us about uh, your next tool, which is also something that you wear, but not on your feet. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I did see that once upon a time, uh, somebody reviewed uh, some Scotty Vest clothing on Cool Tools. Um, I've been using the vest. Now, I'm starting to do more traveling. I just recently got back from a cruise on a wooden schooner in Maine. And packing light for air travel is a little tricky for me because I'm a musician. So my one carry on will always be my auto harp. So that means I have the one personal item. Um, and then that's all I have. And in order to maximize the space available, I use one of those little roll around under seat bags with the telescoping handle, the kind mm -hmm. you see the airline crew using, um, which, you know, takes care of my laptop and that sort of thing. But it's not very convenient for carrying what I would normally have in my purse, you know, credit cards, money, passport, lip balm, cell phone, blah, blah. So that's where the Scotty vest comes in. So basically it's a vest full of like a bajillion pockets. Uh, and you can distribute everything that you'd normally have in your purse, your everyday carry bag through all these pockets. Um, most of the pockets have zippers, so things aren't going to accidentally uh, fall out and it's, you know, fairly pickpocket resistant. Uh, but since the vest counts as clothing, not luggage, it's okay if you bring a fully packed vest and it's basically like having a whole nother bag because you can fit so much in that thing. Um, so, and if you organize it carefully, you can avoid, you know, unsightly bulges, but mm -hmm. it also, you know, it, it makes it easier to make sure you don't leave something behind. So I'll usually have like the keys, the cell phone, money, travel documents, passport, ID, credit cards, lip balm, sunscreen, brush comb, snacks, pens, notebook, but all that stuff fits. You can even fit like a regular water bottle, like, you know, the, the cheap kind that you buy. Or mm -hmm. like I have one of those vapor collapsing water bottles. I usually roll that up in one of the pockets. Um, but yeah, you can fit a regular water bottle in one of the pockets. You could, or you could fit an umbrella there, gloves, hat. So basically, it's like having another little personal item that you can bring with you. Um, there's even so a pocket great. that it theoretically it will fit a small iPad, but I think that would not be very comfortable to wear mm -hmm. if you had an <laughs> iPad in there. So I would, I would only, I would only use that in desperation, but, yeah. um, uh, and then the phone pockets have a kind of a soft plastic in front that allows you to use the phone without taking it out of the pocket if you want. So, um, this is yeah, so great then, for like spirit airlines that has the, like, you know, if they charge you, if you have anything bigger than a, pack of cards you know <laughs> yeah really? precisely really? but this is part of your clothing so yes, exactly. does it count and so the it. one that the one that i bought actually has sleeves i can zip onto it which i haven't used a whole lot but it's nice not to have to bring an extra windbreaker um, I bought my daughter uh, one of the vests uh, with a little hood that uh, rolls up and you can zip it into the collar. And she actually likes it so much. She never carries a purse. She always just grabs the vest. <laughs> That's so um, cool. And then I have, uh, they have a hooded fleece jacket. Uh, the, the, it's called a Chloe jacket. And, you know, not quite as many pockets, but it's a lot warmer. And then they even designed these cool little cuffs that you can roll down and it, it makes a kind of a fingerless mitten. So you don't <laughs> keep oh, your nice. hands warm. So, so yes, yeah, well-designed stuff. Now they are not cheap. Um, you know, all those pockets are going to require a lot of extra labor. They're mm -hmm. using good materials, you know, it's good quality. Uh, and I'm pretty sure they've got like a satisfaction money back guarantee. But um, if you're trying to economize and just want to try something out, I've seen Scotty vests pop up on eBay, new and used. So if you want to try out their clothing without spending a lot of money, just kind of keep an eye out on the, you know, saved searches of Scotty vest on eBay. And uh, eventually they tend to pop up. Yeah. And, and was there a particular model that you recommended? Uh, th there's a number of different yeah. Um, gosh, it's so long since I bought mine. I don't remember what the model name is, but um, I mean, it's the Scotty vest that comes with removable sleeves. But, you know, more or less, I'm just I'm recommending the Scotty vest, um, the vest itself. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the sleeves are kind of, eh, you know, it's a nice thing, but it's not that, um, I don't use it that way very much. I mostly just use it as the vest. Right. And, and that's just, I'm just kind of using the standard women's Scotty vest. It's just in that case, they had extra sleeves. There's, yeah, there's one, there's an R- R- RFID version. There's uh, another one that has not just your usual 18 pockets, but 42 pockets. I don't know <laughs> how is that yeah. possible, but uh, that's what they say. Yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd, I'd be a little <laughs> careful about that because I'll tell you, I bought I bought one for my dad and he loved it except the time that somehow he managed to have his cell phone go not in the pocket, but into the lining. So his <laughs> cell phone rang and he's like going through all it. the pockets and he's not finding the phone. <laughs> so that or he was, forgets his pocket is in. That's, yeah, that's oh, and that's, it yeah, they, yeah, they actually, yeah. yeah, honestly, I think, you know, 18, 20 pockets is bloody plenty. Uh, they also have little tags on there to kind of remind you uh, what goes in there. Oh yeah, they have a, uh, like they have a sunglasses pocket and it has a little, uh, one of those little microfiber claws in there on a tether. So you can oh, always like tie your glasses it. clean. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. And then they have a key tether. So, you know, if you want to, you can just keep your keys on the little, you know, it's got one of those little springy plastic things, you know, kind of like the old fashioned phone cord, one of those. And yeah. so you can keep your keys on there, you know, cause I tell you, whenever I'm traveling, I'm so paranoid about losing the keys of the, <laughs> of the room or whatever. Yeah. So, so it's nice to be able to know that, uh, you know, I may look dumb with them dangling on the end of that tether, but at least they're still there. You know, I won't, I won't have dropped Definitely. them. Definitely. I'm always afraid of losing like rental car keys. Exactly. Exactly. And I did that once. So not fun. <laughs> no. There's a small <laughs> movement among the minimalists to travel without a backpack or luggage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they all wear these and they stuff them literally with, you know, like extra clothes. <laughs> they must and, look and, like the Michelin man. <laughs> well, yeah. And, but they, they don't consider that cheating. So they're, they're basically <laughs> wearing everything, carrying nothing. And um, it is amazing what you could stuff in there if you needed to. Yeah. Um, but, but that is – you. you um, do they have like inside zippers as well? Uh, yes. For, yes. For the key – documents and stuff like that yeah so the so yeah i usually put my my stuff that i'm particularly paranoid about losing um i put that on the inside zipper pockets most all of the pockets have zippers so you know you can be pretty well protected against things falling out uh and uh you can zip the whole thing up the front so if you were you know worried about pickpockets or something if you had you know your important things on the inside zipped in their pockets and then you zip up the front i mean they'd have to be a contortionist so um so yeah that's it's uh, they've got a lot of good options for for whatever you need to put in there they've got deep pockets they got shallow pockets you know etc they've even got a pocket inside you know, one of the pockets where you'd normally put your hand, there's a pocket inside there for you to put like either change or like your lip balm so that it doesn't, you know, it, it stays in place. So it's mm-hmm. like pockets within pockets. I love but- that. <laughs> pocket for your pocket. Exactly. Right, exactly. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's a great one. Well, thank you for the Scotty vests. Very cool. Travel jackets. Yeah. And, and I imagine like, you know, uh, a check bag on Spirit Air, or, I mean, not a check, but just a carry-on bag is like $35 one way. So Ooh. instead of spending like 70 bucks, you can yeah. buy a Scotty vest for 70 70 bucks, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, all right. Wear your luggage. Wear your luggage, <laughs> precisely. That's a good one. Okay, so so what's next on our list, Barbara? Okay, so more, I've, I've kind of been using this, uh, at least I started using this mainly for travel, but it also works for every day. So uh, one big problem with packing light, uh, if there are no laundry facilities available, things can get kind of odiferous, uh, socks and shirts particularly. And I just got back, like I said, from that uh, main schooner cruise. But the thing is, you couldn't do any laundry. There were no laundry facilities. They wouldn't even let you wash in the sink because there's just not enough fresh water in the tanks. Uh, and they're also, I mean, the cabins are like tiny, tiny. So there wasn't enough room to stow seven days of clothing changes. Mm-hmm. So um, I have gotten a uh, bit by bit more merino wool clothing uh, because merino 
It absorbs and wicks moisture so well it can hold like 35% of its weight in water. So even if you sweat like crazy, it still feels dry. And then without that available moisture, the microbes that would normally make things kind of smell like a locker room. Funky. They don't have they don't have a chance to yeah, they don't have a chance to get down mm-hmm. and get funky. So um I wore a merino shirt next to my skin, a merino socks, and even after, you know, rowing to shore, which we had to do because there wasn't a motorboat, uh they, they never began to smell. Um and so I've been like buying you know dark colors so they're less likely to stain. Um and then the other nice thing about it is because uh, it means you're any clothing you have out of merino, as long as you wash it properly, it can last a lot longer because, uh, you know, as you probably know, the biggest enemy of clothing is washers and dryers, particularly dryers. Because, you know, obviously when you clean out that lint trap, all that lint used to be your clothes. So (laughs) (laughs) exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so I'm, yeah, I'm a big, big fan of wool, Mm -hmm. inner clothes these days and it had the same kind of aha epiphany um (laughs) when i was traveling with like my socks stinky feet and i can wear the same wool socks for a week and no smell at all and it's really um amazing um do you have a particular brand because merino is almost like a generic term at this point yeah um there's smart wool there's Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's other, that's one of the good things. brands. So uh, the shirt that I was wearing was, uh, I got it off uh, Amazon. Uh, the company was called Mary Wool, M-E-R-I-W-O-O-L, Mary Wool. Mm-hmm. Um, Icebreaker is also a good um, company. Um, you know, if, if at all possible, I'd always say either, you know, buy it in person or buy it with free returns because, uh, you know how it is, there's Merino and Merino. Sometimes you feel it and go, whoa, this is a lot feels a lot itchier than it should Mm. you know good good merino clothing should not feel itchy on your skin and if you're going to be wearing it next to your skin you don't want it to itch right so and 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 all these are actually um blends there's not really 100 percent merino it's usually blended with something else and that usually there's a little bit of something right yeah and that that kind of also differs by by maker as well so with the socks, I found a company called Lixia, L-I-X-I-A on Amazon, and they had 78% merino wool dress socks, black dress socks, and it was like $25 for six pairs. And Wow, um, that's a great price. Yeah, so far I haven't... Um, you know, I mean, not that I'm trying to 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 find out how long I'd have to wear them before they stink, but but you know, it's I've just been kind of amazed. And I I did run across on the internet uh, there was a guy who actually he and a bunch of friends decided to see how far they could take it, and they took a merino wool um, shirt, and they were like. Each of them would take it and then they would do the sweatiest things they could think of, you know, you're chopping wood or rowing or, you know, whatever. And then they'd pass it on to the next guy and they passed it on to like five guys, you know, over the course of three weeks, you know, all trying to outdo each other in how much sweat and it still did not stink. You know, it it didn't smell, you know, April fresh anymore, but it (laughs) it didn't stink. (laughs) So, oh, and the other thing uh, to bear in mind, of course, with merino wool, um, it'll last a lot longer if you use something like uh, Wool Light All Darks, um, uh, you know, washing soap in the black bottle um, and cold water delicate cycle or hand wash, hang dry. Uh, But yeah, if you keep on washing it that way and, you know, not (laughs) running it through the dryer, Mm -hmm. it's going to last for a long, long time. I will say though that I do wash my socks in with the rest of our our smart wool socks with the rest of our clothes in cold water in the washing machine and dryer and it's been perfectly fine. So yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it's I think it's more of a matter of you know after you know three or four years that you might yeah. notice the difference. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. yeah, it it works pretty well. So yes, merino, good stuff. Merino, good. Okay, that sounds good. So, what else do you have for us? So the last one is a book. So when you get down to it, people haven't changed a whole lot over several thousand years. We have the same problems we've always had, uh, problems that technology can't adequately address. So finding a reason to get up in the morning, dealing with annoyances and dealing with setbacks, trying to figure out what your life's work is and how to go about it, uh, which is 
you know, a, a lot of people have been putting a lot of thought into this over the years. But uh, so the the answers, they've kind of been around for millennia as well. But even most avid readers aren't dying to curl up with a copy of the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius or the Tao Te Ching or something like that. So I do like it when somebody kind of takes ancient and modern wisdom and condenses it into a more digestible form. So uh, the book is called Stillness is the Key. The author is Ryan Holiday. And it's He's nothing- been on our show before. Oh, yes. well, there we go. Okay. Yes. So, you know, it's nothing earth shattering. It's nothing radically new. You know, a lot of the stuff you read and go, well, I knew that, only I wasn't doing it, you know? <laughs> so it's just things that you kind of need to be reminded of how important they are uh, in an easy to read and engaging format. Um, separates the book into mind, body, and spirit sections and tackles one idea at a time in short chapters. So it's like really easy just to read a chapter and think about it for the day, you know, kind of thing. It's not going to tie you up for a long time. So, I mean, and, and we have chapters like Take a Walk, uh, cultivate solitude and one called enough. Um, and there's enough examples to drive the point home without becoming really tedious or repetitive. So I've found the practices it, it describes to be really helpful for stress reduction and kind of increasing feelings of gratitude and joy and just kind of general feeling better. So um, Cal Newport, really yeah, Cal Newport says, uh, Brian Holiday, quote, distills wisdom, unquote, and that pretty much sums it up. So that's something you can find in most libraries um, on the shelf or available for download. Uh, I think YouTube has the audio book. And then, of course, you can always buy it. Mm -hmm. hmm. That sounds like a really good book. Yeah, I actually, uh, recently I, I kind of retired, kind of, I'm mm -hmm. still coming and working occasionally, <laughs> but uh, I, gave, I gave my boss that a copy of the book. It was like, dude, you need this. <laughs> so, That's great. Right. Well, and, stillness and, is the key is the title again. This is more like for um, self-improvement, for self-care, for trying to uplift your your perspective. Is that mostly well, what you're getting from you it? know. Like I say, they kind of have the mind, body, spirit sections. Uh, and so, you know, there is uplift, but there's also simple things like, hey, you know, you need to get out and take a walk sometimes. And, you know, <laughs> you know, you, you need to not be, uh, you know, staring at screens all day, it, you know, but a lot of it, uh, you know, he's very, as you no doubt know, if you've uh, had him as a guest, he's very much into stoicism. And so a whole lot of that philosophy is in there. And stoicism, you know, at least it seems to me, is more or less the study of learning to live better in general. So <laughs> that seems to kind of be uh, summing it up. But uh, but anyway, so yeah, there's it, it's, it's, you know, getting your mind, your body, your spirit, uh, you know, little ways to improve it uh, bit by bit, you know, not huge chunks, uh, pretty easy to follow. And uh, and pretty interesting. So, great, great okay. recommendation. Um, well, Barbara, this has been really great catching up with you, and you told us some great tools. I really appreciate it always, and um, always, like I said, love seeing your your reviews on cool tools. So, uh, I highly recommend if you're listening to this to do a search on on Barbara's name and check out all the re reviews she does for us. Maybe we'll highlight some of our, our favorites on the, the show notes for this podcast, too. Yeah. Greatest hits. <laughs> yes, exactly. Barbara's greatest hits. Sounds good. Well, Barbara, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. All right. Well, thanks for asking me, and uh, I look forward to doing it again sometime. Hey, everybody. It's your host, Mark, and I wanted to thank you for listening to The Cool Tools Show and I also wanted to let you know that we've got a lot more going on at Cool Tools than just this podcast. We also have the Cool Tools website, which has a new tool review every day. And you can get there by going to cool-tools.org. We also have four different newsletters that you can subscribe to. And you can subscribe to those from the Cool Tools page. We have this podcast that you're listening to right now. We also have a YouTube channel where we review tools. Check that out. YouTube channel out by going to youtube.com slash cool tools. And one of the things I'd like to ask you is if you're really enjoying everything that we are producing, go to our Patreon page and support us there. 
you can sign up and give us as little as $1 a month, and that would mean a lot to us. The money that we get from Patreon goes towards a lot of things. We transcribe our podcast interviews so that you can read them online. We pay for editing of our podcasts and for our videos. We pay our contributors. We have video production costs. We have equipment costs. We have hosting costs. And the money you give us through Patreon also goes to support Cool Tools Lab. Anything you give is a huge help. And one of the things that we do is if you are a contributor to Patreon, we'll give you a shout out on air. And so I have a few people here to thank this week. Mark Lyonage, Micah Gates, Monty Zukowski, Patrick James McNally, Robert Cohen, Scott, Spence Lloyd, Steve Avery, Steve Golden, Steve Levine, Tom Hess, William Phillips, Aaron Nipper, Darab Patel, Glenn Mercer, Jay Walker, Jeff Bonner, Ryan Jarrell, Pat Daly, Patrick Kennedy, Troy Wallet, Mike Camerate, Nicole Harkin, Tim Youssef, Scott Reed. Thanks all of you for supporting Cool Tools. And if you would like to have a shout out, go over to the Patreon page and sign up. And thanks for listening to the Cool Tools podcast. We'll see you next week.